In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're continuing with the nothingness, um, and uh, living in our nothingness. And Louisa says, and it happened in this way. Every morning after Holy Communion, Jesus would tell me what I was supposed to do during the day. Same thing for us. God is going to speak to us. And you're not going to hear him with your ears. He's going to show you. And the, the, when you receive Holy Communion in the morning, this, this time of, of being fused with God, this communion with God, we have to get to the point of being able to hear him. Again, you don't hear it with your ears. Some, some do, but most don't. And you begin to, Jesus will show you, this is what I want you to do. And this is why the fiat is so great. Because during the day, he'll say, listen attentively, and I will teach you. So as we're reading the book of heaven, he's teaching us. And this is what he does. So Louisa says, I shall say very, everything briefly, because after so much time, it is impossible to say everything. So here she's just finished volume two. And the and she says the 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 her 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 priest said, tell me everything, put down on paper everything that Jesus told you. She says, if I do this, we'll be here forever. So I'll just tell you briefly, uh, because it's been there's been so much since the beginning of her life when when God was speaking to her as a child. There was so much, and you're going to learn about this as as time goes on. I shall say everything briefly. She says. Um, I don't remember for sure, but it seems to me that Jesus told me that the first thing that was necessary in order to purify my interior, the interior of my heart. So the first thing is purity. Okay. The first thing to purify the interior of my heart was the annihilation of myself. That is humility. Now, what's, what's the way we receive humility is by being humiliated. Okay. That's the way it's done. So what God will do is he'll put you in situations where you're humiliated, okay? Let's think of your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your parishioners. If you really believe in the Holy Church, this is the humiliation that comes. If you really believe in the sanctity of life, if you really believe in the sacraments and sacramentals, what will happen is you'll be humiliated, uh, I, I, I got to go to church. Why do you have to go to church? I want to go to confession. You go to confession. What? You, you talk to a human. God is the one that forgives. That's absolutely right. God does. And he does it through the priest, the absolution. Oh, what are you, what are you, what are you into magic? You want, I want to go to church. Why? I want to see the body, blood, soul, and the divinity. You believe that that bread is Jesus. You're, we're going to be humiliated for our belief and good. Jesus says, this brings purity of heart, humiliation. That's to be, to have this humility is only through humiliation. When you, when you really believe in, in the truth of the church where the world doesn't, you're going to be, you're not going to get a good job. You're not going to, um, you're going to be forced out. You're going to be rejected, misunderstood, abandoned, persecuted, laughed at, spit upon, crucified. You're going to be like Jesus. This is, this is why it's so important that we don't get angry when somebody doesn't agree with us. It's, it's, I, I don't want you to agree with me, but I want you to try to understand what, what Jesus is saying to Louisa. When, when you read what Jesus says to Louisa, it's a whole new beginning. And so he says, Jesus continued, and he says, telling me uh, to Louisa, see, so that I may pour my graces into your heart, I really want to make you understand that by yourself, you can do nothing. That's why we love the church. That's why we love the sacraments. That's why we love the sacramentals. That's why we pray the rosary. That's why we wear the scapular. It's because I can't do anything by myself. I, I, am, I am a failure of doing anything by myself. It's when, it's when God is reigning that I can, I can live. I can truly live. So Jesus says, I am aware, very much aware of those souls who attribute what they do to themselves, wanting to make of my graces, Jesus says, as many thefts. 
For example, when we're born, we're born with nothing. If you have the gift of mathematics, God has given you an angel of mathematics. You know, this, this inspiration, how did I come to this point? You know, if you're, if you're an artist, if you're a musician, if you're, if you're a dancer, if you're a singer, if you're, if you can plow a field and grow, grow, you have a green thumb, grow anything. Jesus said, Jesus shows Louisa that when he gives us something, he gives us a living gift, an angel who will help us in that way. So when Jesus says, he says, uh, uh, he says, I'm aware of those souls who attribute this. Give me a star. Give me an award. Give me, I'm so good at this. Jesus says, I'm, uh, he says, I'm very weary, wary of those souls who attribute to themselves uh, what I have given them by my grace. Humility is to say, you are my Lord, my Savior, my Master, my King. And the only way this was accomplished is through your help. Listen to um, uh, Jim Caviezel sometime. He's a very humble guy. And he attributes everything to God. That humility is what God can use because that's, that's a purity that God can use in his acting. He says, he says, on the other hand, those souls who know themselves, I am, he uses God's name, I am generous in pouring my graces in torrents. Those who know themselves, it's not that I am good at anything, but those that I know that I am nothing. Knowing very well that they can attribute nothing to themselves, they are grateful to God, to Jesus. And they hold it, uh, hold it in that esteem that befits this gift that they have. They live with a continuous fear that if they do not correspond to me, Jesus, if they don't correspond to me, Jesus says, I may take away from them that which I gave them, knowing that it is not something of their own. So if, you know, I, I love it when you see somebody in sports, somebody, you know, a musician, an artist, and they say, you're great. Look what you've done. And he says, all for the grace of God. Uh, Rush Limbo used to say, you know, I, I have, I, this is the gift that God has given me on loan. That, that's, that's true humility. It's not, I mean, he, he was fun to listen to, but it was not, he didn't, he would always give thanks to God in his, in his way. And, and Jesus says, uh, I, he says, they, 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 are, they are afraid, not afraid, but if I don't give honor to God thinking it's me, God will go, oh, really? You think you can, you think you can swim like this? Let me show you what will happen if I take this gift away. And, and so it's always to say to God, you know, if any, any good that I do, it's from you, Lord. Any bad that I do is from me. So it's, it's to recognize God, to, to, be, to embrace God. This is, this is what is doing, Jesus is showing us through Louisa. All the opposite. He says, all the opposite of the hearts that reek with pride. I, God, cannot even enter into their hearts because they are so swollen with themselves. And there is no space in which to put myself. Those miserable ones take my graces into no account. And if they go, they go from fall to fall up to their ruin. Let's look at, let's look at great actors, great actresses, great musicians. If they think they're doing this and, and they're the ones, if they don't have the humility of turning to God and saying, thank you for this gift that you have given me. He says, fall to fall to their ruin. We don't want to go there. And we might be on the road to there, but we've got to remember it's God who has given us this gift. And at the end of our life, when we stand naked before the Lord, what's God going to do? He's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? I mean, it's really going to be, and we're not going to be, there's not going to be nobody around to say, oh, they did this and they did it. It's what did you do? This is why confession is so important that we really get down to who we are. We are nothing. That we don't, we don't focus on our misery we, we say, but you, Lord, are everything. My, my hope is in you. My joy is in you. My confidence is in you. Is in you. That's, that's, that's Louisa. That's what Louisa lived. Therefore, on this day, Jesus says, I want you to make continuous acts of humility. What does that mean? Lord, you are everything. 
See, the, the joy of knowing that we can do nothing is not to go, oh, I'm terrible, I'm awful, I'm terrible. It's God, you are great. You are magnificent. I, I love you. I praise you. I thank you. I bless you. I adore you. I worship you. This is what we do in front of the Blessed Sacrament. We look at Jesus in the host. We look at Jesus in the monstrance. And we say, you are my God. You're my savior. You're my king. You're my all. And you humble yourself to be present. You humble yourself that I can see you. And, and what God is saying is, is what St. Teresa said, is this is the only time where we can really pray and love God freely. Because when we get to heaven, when we see God, he is so beautiful, we're, we're going to fall on our faces in adoration. We're going to praise him eternally. And, and through all eternity, we're, we're never going to uh, embrace the totality of who he is. He says, therefore, on this day, I want you to make continuous acts of humility. I, God, want you to be like a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes who can move neither a foot nor take a step. Swaddling clothes that are like this. It's like, it's like uh, you see the papoose where the, the, the natives would keep their babies in. They couldn't move. Okay. I want you to be like a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes that you can either move a foot or take a step or a hand to work but expects everything from his mother in the same way, Jesus says, this is in the same way, you shall stay close to me like a baby, always praying to me to assist you, always praying to me to help you, always confessing to me your nothingness and some expecting everything from me. To see what God is doing. He's beginning to let us be live this abundant life of peace, joy, and happiness by focusing on him. Not, not, to, not, to, have, not to have the freedom to do what we want. The, like I said, the only thing we can do well is sin. That's the only thing we can do well. And it's not good. <laughs> it's, it's God is teaching us how to wait to live the life, the true life of Jesus, the new Adam, and Mary, the new Eve, through Louisa. So he says, this is what I want. In the same way, stay close to me like a baby in a papoose. He says, making, praying to me always to assist you, praying to me always to help you, praying to me always confessing your nothingness. I can do nothing, Lord. It's you, you alone. And I praise you, and I thank you, and I bless you, and I adore you, and I worship you. That's heaven. That's heaven. And he, God wants us to begin to live this joy, this happiness of seeing him, being bound to him, not having any room to move, to fall into sin. In some, he says, expect everything from me. That, that's, that's what we do in the prevening act in the morning. We get up in the morning and we say, I fuse myself with you, trying God. By fusing myself with you, Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. By fusing myself with all that you, God, have done in creation and redemption, I want, to, I want this sanctification of your life, Jesus, of your life, Mary, through Louisa. I want to live in the divine will. I want to enter the prime act of God, the single act of God. I want to be one with you, Triune God. As we do this, because he says, you can do nothing. He says, come to me and watch what I can do. So we'll end with a prayer. May the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will. May we all be divinely healed, and we pray that this prayer becomes God's command. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.